In our last video, we looked at part one of the Blue Water Bridge, which covered the planning and the building of the bridge. And today we want to look at part two, which covers the dedication and the celebration of the bridge. The bridge was complete, except for maybe a few finishing touches, like perhaps grass in this photograph here. We don't see any grass, but in this photograph, we can see that there is grass. And I've got a couple more postcards here. You can uh, see the American side, and in this one here, you have the Canadian side. On Monday, the week of the dedication for the bridge uh, disappeared in the Times Herald. 100,000 expected for span rights. Dedication is set for noon on Saturday. On Tuesday, this was the headline. Governor will arrive Friday. He will also attend the coronation of the bridge queen. And then it gives a picture about uh, where the dedication program would be held. In case you can't tell by that photograph, you might be able to tell by this layout here that we've seen earlier. Uh, that red X uh, shows where the dedication uh, ceremony was going to take place. There was a raised stage just uh, south of that, uh, so I, actually the speakers were facing that area. And probably these were VIPs in that area. Everybody else was all around the bridge. And I imagine those invited guests wore a badge, just like this one that uh, I found as a memorabilia, official guest, Blue Water Bridge. And then below there is a dedication of the Blue Water Bridge ticket. In Wednesday paper, the headline was 200 stations to carry program. Span broadcast plans complete. The Blue Water Bridge dedication celebration will be carried to every nook and corner of the United States and Canada Saturday by more than 200 radio stations affiliated with the Columbia Broadcasting System, Mutual Broadcasting System, and the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. In Thursday paper, the headline was Bridge Celebration Opens Friday, Rededication of Peace Plaque to Start Program. So it's going to be a two-day celebration, Friday and Saturday. It says rededication because originally this plaque was dedicated uh, at the ferry line uh, between Canada and the uh, United States. That's who's shown in this photograph unveiling the plaque. There's also a photograph on the front page that says night views of the Blue Water Bridge. Now, you can't see very well in this photograph, of course, but uh, that did bring to mind that the lighting system that they had on the original uh, bridge were all uh, yellow light, very much like the ones they had in Marysville at one time. You can see the title here saying the sodium vapor lights illumine Blue Water Bridge. And it goes on to tell uh, why they were yellow. It says the entire bulb is luminous with a brilliancy much less than that of an incandescent filament in a common lamp of equal strength. For this reason, the soft golden yellow of the sodium vapor arc is easier on the motorist's eyes. In addition, this type of light has the ability to penetrate a foggy atmosphere more readily. Friday's headline said to be formally dedicated on Saturday, with a picture of the bridge right below it, peace program held on bridge, and that would have been the plaque unveiling that we looked at, and celebration events begin. One of the events on Friday was the Coronation Ball, and that is where Governor Frank Murphy crowned the Blue Water Queen, Judy Dunford, and you have a photograph of it here. The crown and scepter was delivered on pillows by these two children right here, Sally Hode and Freddie Regan. And as we scan over here to the left, you can see the throng of people that was at the coronation ball. And a little bit further, we can see the governor walking with the Blue Water Queen. But Saturday was the big day. This was the headline and the day that the bridge opened. Governor Premier dedicates span, thousands see bridge parade, ceremony held at noon today. The special speakers uh, for that day are shown here. On the top row, you have Governor Frank Murphy, 
then Senator Prentice Brown, then Premier Mitchell Hepburn. On the bottom, you have uh, McWestern, who was the Ontario Minister of Highways, Wagner, who was the State Highway Commissioner, Ross, who was a Reeve of Point Edward, and Guthrie, who was a member of the Ontario Assembly. Premier and Governor throw switch to start gaiety. Crowds warm span as greetings offered and prayers intoned. The prayers are referring to is uh, right here in this photograph. They met at the center of the bridge, a combination of different clergy, different denominations, different countries all together, and they offered prayers for the bridge and of course the countries represented. The prayers went over a loudspeaker system and it also appears that perhaps it went over the radio as well. You see the microphone WJR. The parade started at 10 o'clock in the morning at Court and Military Street and went down uh, Military to Huron Avenue at the Pine Grove Avenue all the way to the bridge. And the people that were walking in the parade, they could go up on the bridge and join the crowd. But the cars and the floats had to go back to a meeting place at the Thomas Street crossing. Here we see the floats, or at least some of them. Thousands viewed colorful parades Saturday morning. These aren't real great pictures, but let's see if we can't make out some of these floats. First one on the upper left would be the Times Herald. The next one says Mother's Camp, the Salvation Army. And then to the right, we have Asman Florist. Below that, uh, we have the 20th anniversary of the American Legion. And then to the left of that, we have Pops Flowers. And to the left of that, we have uh, Miss Blue Water float the, the queen and her court. Below that, we have a great looking bridge float, but it doesn't say on the side who sponsors it. And then to the right of that, we have the city of Port Huron. And then this last one's hard to make out, but I think that's the grandstands viewing the parade. And this photograph here shows some of the crowd that was waiting for the parade. The Dedication Day program Saturday was opened by the University of Detroit, University of Western Ontario relay race from the center of the main span of the Blue Water Bridge. The American team raced the Lambton County Courthouse in Sarnia with goodwill greetings from Mayor Charles Reddy, Port Huron, to Mayor Fred Palin, Sarnia. The Canadian team's course led to the City Hall here where Mayor Reddy is shown receiving Sarnia's greetings from one of Western Ontario runners. In the center is Lou Davies, coach of the Canadian team. And of course, there were souvenirs to go around too. Here we see the chairman of the State Bridge Commission of Michigan holding one of the Blue Water Bridge souvenir auto plates issued by the state of Michigan, presented to him on the bridge by Troop 14 of the Boy Scouts. And this is what that license plate looked like. Here are a couple more photos of some memorabilia from the dedication. And they even had their own composed music for the dedication. Across the Blue Waters, the official song of the Blue Water Bridge dedication. And of course, the merchants got involved as well. As you can see here in this ad from the standard gas stations, it shows all the owners uh, in the area and has their pictures and uh, has to put their little insert about the Blue Water Bridge as well. Maybe you recognize some of these fellows. Here's one from the H.A. Smith grocery stores that most folks of my age will remember quite well. And here's one from the Gresley and Company Plumbing and Heating Company showing one of their vehicles on the bridge. And the Blue Water Bridge even made it into the comics. And of course, everybody wanted their pictures taken. And of course, they wanted the bridge in the background 
or in the foreground in some cases. The official Blue Water photographers were George Asker and George Shane from the Asker Shane Photographic Studios in Port Huron. Note in this ad it has a different location than most of us remember on Military Street. They were on Huron Avenue and upstairs over the Lagos Drug Store, which would later be the Wolver Store there on the corner. And here's a photograph of the photographer George Shane uh, setting up to take a photograph of the bridge. You're not going to put that camera in your pocket. And finally, the time for the dedication came. And this was what was in the Times Herald. Officials, people, dedicate bridge to peace. And on the left, you see a picture of the governor of Michigan. And on the right, you see the premier of uh, Ontario. And in the center, you see some of the crowd that's gathered for the dedication. A little better picture of it right here. Here's some more of that crowd at the foot of State Street. Here's a video clip of that same area of people. This is from the same film that we looked at in our last video from Kip Cuthbert. And here we see the dedication itself. A crowd of people that's enjoying it. And then we see the speakers as well, right here, being uh, broadcast over WHLS. When I first collected this article from the newspaper, where it says Premier and Governor throw switch to start gaiety, I wasn't real certain uh, what it meant, and it really didn't explain it on this page of the paper. But I did find out after doing a little further research. After Governor Murphy finished his dedication address, he and Premier Hepburn threw switches, which started motors opening gates on the American and the Canadian ends of the bridge permitting the crowds to surge onto the international span. Pedestrians could walk free across the bridge up until 8 o'clock that night. The switch was thrown at 1 o'clock. Shortly after that was the arrival of United States Naval Reserve planes from the Gross Isle Naval Base. At 1.15, the International Boat Parade from Black River Port Huron to Lake Huron and returned. And as it says here, thousands see yacht parade. When the parade went under the Blue Water Bridge, there was a 19-gun salute in honor of Premier Hepburn. At 2.30 was the international sailboat races off Pine Grove Park in Sarnia Yacht Club. And at 7 p.m., there was a concert in Pine Grove Park at the Pavilion by the Windsor Salvation Army Band. The following day is Sunday, the bridge was open to traffic, uh, car traffic, and uh, they could go free that whole day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, pedestrians could also go on the bridge on Sunday, but they had to pay 10 cents. How would you like to take a ride on that new bridge? Well, here you go. I showed you the entrance and the exit on the American side in video number 12. But I've got a picture of the exit I don't think you've seen before. At least I hadn't seen it uh, before I found it. And uh, it's this one right here. See all the cars coming off the exit at the Y, uh, going either east or west. And if you look uh, in the background, at uh, those cars in the background, those, uh, those cars were on the entrance uh, to the bridge, uh, waiting their turn to go through customs. And check out this popcorn wagon. Pretty cool, huh? The ferries could continue to run. However, the car ferries could no longer haul cars across the river, only passengers. All automobiles were routed to the bridge. The photo for this postcard was taken shortly after the bridge was built. It was colored in by the artist. She stood alone over the St. Clair River for over a half a century. 
until her sister bridge came along right next to her. And we'll look at that bridge in our next video.